Yo guys, it's Noah. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a film analysis on Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson. Real quick announcement before we jump into the video. At the time of editing this video, we are currently at 955 subscribers. We are only 45 subscribers away from 1,000 and I can't thank you enough for helping me reach this goal. Hopefully with this video, we'll reach that goal and we can celebrate accordingly. Thank you very much and now let's get into the video. Now Russell Wilson needs no introduction. He's a perennial top quarterback in the NFL and has been since he's entered the league as a rookie in 2012. He's a magician against the pass rush, always seeming to slip away from the relentless defensive linemen of today's NFL, an expert of diagnosing coverages, and the unequivocal master of the art of throwing the deep ball. And to top it all off is an eight-time Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion. However, all of this prowess and expertise comes at a price. The Seahawks did not do particularly well this year. Despite making the playoffs, it's really easy to tell that the Seahawks were not playing their best football. And naturally, in the NFL, when a team doesn't do well, a lot of eyes start to gaze towards the quarterback. However, I don't find Russell Wilson to be at fault for the Seahawks' woes. In fact, what I intend to do with this video is to point out a few flaws that I see in Russell Wilson's game and offer my opinion on how I think they could be fixed, but generally, I think a lot of these problems across the team stem from coaching. So that's enough chatter, let's hop into the video and break down some film. Now, the first thing that jumps off the page to me when looking at Russell Wilson's film is a complete and utter lack of faith in targets not named DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett. And as this film will show, that was a constant downward slope from the beginning of the season. This wasn't just something Russell Wilson woke up and decided to do. I'm using this play as a singular example. Russ goes to throw the pass, pump fakes, kinda hesitates, and then throws it. Some may argue that this was just a coincidence because of the pass rush and didn't want to throw the interception, and although that is a valid point to make, this was demonstrated multiple times throughout the season, and I think it's more of a hesitation due to the receiver, not necessarily the coverage or the play call. So this play right here is one of the first plays in the game. Um, against the Rams in the playoffs. So it's a too high safety zone look with a rolled up corner and a drop corner. Jalen Ramsey is dropping back to play a soft coverage on Tyler Lockett, whereas uh, the corner at the top of the screen is rolling up to play a little tighter on DK Metcalf. The concept of this play is a speed out to the bottom of the screen with a drag from the tight end across the middle. On the back side of the play, there's a high low read of two in routes, one being a 15 yard and one being a five yard. The general read progression of a play like this is gonna be one, is the speed out at the bottom of the screen. Two is going to be coming back to the opposite side of the field, reading the high-low, and then coming back down to the drag route by the tight end, and lastly, the dump-off route to the running back. So, looking at the play art of this play, it's a relatively simple concept. There's only one or two reads that the quarterback has to make. Seeing that Jalen Ramsey is playing off ball, it would be really easy for Russell Wilson to just take the speed out to Tyler Lockett, easy completion, take the five yards, seven yards, you know, break a tackle, who knows how far it can go. But the fact that he doesn't take it immediately is not a bad thing. That's not the wrong read, per se. There's ample opportunity to get more yardage on more successful routes later in the play. So, the linebacker in the middle of the field, that is the key player of the beginning of this play. The tight end running the drag route is not really there to be open as a viable route. It's more to draw that linebacker out of there. If you get that middle linebacker out of the play or at least following the tight end for a little bit, you go to that DB that's playing more like a, a an outside linebacker position and you'll read the high low from there. If he stays high, you take the low route. If he stays low, you take the high route behind him. That is all determined by if the linebacker follows the tight end. So the ball is snapped and Russell Wilson completely ignores the out route to the bottom of the field. And that's completely okay. Like I said earlier, there's more viable routes later in the play. So that's pretty standard for a quarterback to, to bypass that read initially. What he sees already is that the middle linebacker is engaging with the tight end. He's following him. He's flowing with him and that opens up the pocket for the high-low read. So that blue cone is where Russell Wilson is looking. He sees the uh, DB dropping back to the high route, which means that the under is there in that little red box. And the asterisk is where roughly the ball should be placed by the time he releases it and uh, the receiver gets there. However, what does Russell Wilson see when he's looking at this high low? He sees that the high is not going to be open. So he looks to the low with DK Metcalf. But what does he see? He sees contact. And that is scary because he knows that the Rams defensive line is pretty gnarly and he has to get the ball out quick. So he sees a slight bit of contact and he immediately shifts his eyes away from him and we'll see what happens after that. So look what happened. Russell Wilson looked towards DK, saw the contact, 
pulled the ball down and tried to make something happen. Problem is, is he ran right into Aaron Donald and gets taken down for the sack. The only viable throw that he can make from here is maybe the tight end coming back from the drag route. Problem is, he's already wrapped up by Aaron Donald, but if you look back at the pocket, there's a big yellow area where he could still be standing. There was no real reason to bail out of the pocket like that, considering the big yellow area that I highlighted where he could still be standing. He ran right into his sack, but it isn't all bad news. Had Russell Wilson stayed with his read for half a second longer, he would have gotten the completion off, DK Metcalf would have had the ball, and who knows what would have happened with the play. What this does prove to me though, and why it's not bad news, is that Russell Wilson is not reading his receivers. He's reading the defense, which is a very important thing. Too often, quarterbacks read their receivers and not the defense. They get too locked on to a route, and that's what causes interceptions or incompletions, or routes just don't end up open like you thought they would. DK Metcalf would have opened up about a half a second later. Russell Wilson had time to make that throw. It's just that I think a combination of seeing the contact, understanding the situation with the Rams defensive line, knowing how close he is to the end zone and not wanting to take a sack here, considering how dangerous it could be, he tries to make something happen. So it's not all bad news from the sense of Russell Wilson, but the problem is, is that he should have just stayed with his read for half a second longer. Stay in the pocket, don't bail out, don't get antsy feet, and just complete the throw. Next play on the list is also against the Rams in the playoffs. And what you'll see here is effectively an all curls concept. All the receivers, with the exception of the tight end and the running back, are gonna be running 10, 15 yard curls. They vary in uh, in distance to try to separate the defense, create lanes for the ball to fly into. However, what you'll notice the tight end does is he is chip blocking and then releasing towards the sideline towards the sticks. What's important to remember is that this is against man coverage. All the DBs are lined up directly across from the people that they're gonna be covering. And with the tight end doing a chip block, that could potentially fool the defensive back. And what's important to remember as a quarterback is if the defense makes a mistake in man coverage, replace the mistake with the ball. If they blitz, you also replace the blitzer with the ball. That's just a general rule that quarterbacks are taught. So what should Russell Wilson do? First of all, he should diagnose that this is man coverage. I'm pretty sure he has a good idea of this and he understands that against man coverage, curls have a pretty good um, ability to get separation. So here's the play art of the play. You'll see the receivers running their curls, uh, followed by a backside post, which I forgot to mention earlier, but the concept is the same. Um, all the man defenders are highlighted in orange. The two defenders highlighted in red. Those are the two high safeties that are going to be playing a deep zone. So the ball is snap. Russell Wilson starts taking his drop. And what does the man defender that's responsible for the tight end see? He sees the tight end chipping on the defensive end. So in the defender's mind, he's immediately going to shift his eyes to Russell Wilson and start drifting towards the middle of the field, reading the quarterback's eyes and just try to play in the middle uh, so that no receivers, you know, break free and get wide open across the middle. That's his general job once he realizes that the tight end's blocking. And normally that would be the correct play for the defender to make. However, what he does is he makes the mistake of not realizing that his man is chipping and now running a route. The blue cone is where uh, the defender is looking. The red is where he should be looking. The blue by Russell Wilson is where Russell is looking. Because right now what he's seeing is pressure from his right side, so he's drifting left. The problem with, with what Russell is doing here is that knowing that it's man coverage, if he sees a man just sitting in the middle of the field drifting for no real reason, he knows he should know at that point that someone somewhere is open and he should start reading. And what, what would he see if he just looked straight up and down the field? He would see all three receivers, all four if you, if you count the running back, with their man by them. Who does that leave? The tight end to his right side. Stop your drop, stop your rollout, plant your foot, throw the ball on the magenta line. That's where the ball should go. And if you look at the the personnel matchups, there's two blockers in forms of Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, and then it becomes a one-on-one -on -one with the tight end and the safety. Obviously, eventually he would probably get tackled, but the point is, is that it creates um, a one-on-one -on -one that the tight end could potentially win. Who knows how far this play goes if Russell Wilson hangs in there a little bit and reads the defense a little bit better. Those last few plays had a lot to do with Russell Wilson's physical placement within the pocket. He always just seemed to be a little too far or outside of the pocket or in the wrong place within the pocket to make the correct throw. But that doesn't mean he's exempt from instances where he actually just misses a throw. Right here, it's play against the Giants, double post with a curl and an out route. What you'll notice is he has a five-man protection plus a tight end. However, the tight end's running around, so he doesn't count in the protection scheme. So, Russell Wilson sees five down linemen. He should see five pass rushers. And I've highlighted Logan Ryan, a Giants cornerback, with the number six, because Russell Wilson should be staring at 
him pre-snap because what you'll notice is five offensive linemen no one but russell wilson in the backfield so if that sixth man comes then he doesn't have a blocker for him and that pass rusher is going to come free so what you heard me say earlier in the video is when the defense makes a mistake especially in man coverage but in any instance you replace the mistake with the ball when you're getting blitzed you replace the blitzer with the ball so if number six if the sixth man starts rushing the pass what should russell wilson do immediately replace the area that he left with the ball which will be the curl route ran by the tight end what you see russell wilson do is he's already made up his mind where he's going to throw the ball he has made up his mind at this exact moment that he's throwing the out route to tyler lockett and it, although it's not like the worst possible read he could make there was just a better one and this is what i meant early in the video when i said there seems to be a complete lack of trust in anyone not named tyler lockett or dk metcalf so the ball is snapped and what happens the sixth man is rushing the passer and russell wilson staring at his out route like i said it's not the worst read he could make the problem is that he's already made up his mind and he doesn't even bother to go through his other reads had he looked anywhere but where he stared at for the entire play he would realize that the tight end is sitting right over the middle wide open the sixth man normally would have man responsibilities for the tight end however since he's blitzing the responsibility transfers to the safety and the safety would have to come down to guard that tight end which he's doing so there's two things russell wilson could have done one take the easy completion to the tight end or two if he wanted to try to sidestep the pass rusher he could start looking at those post routes considering that the safety has to come down it leaves the middle of the field in the end zone wide open and one of those post routes is bound to come open however russell doesn't stray from his decision that he made pre-snap and he throws the out route to tyler lockett the ball is a little inaccurate and it sails out of bounds incompletion but what you'll notice is the tight end still standing free for you know at least five yards possibly even more possibly a touchdown if he breaks a tackle and you'll see the bottom receiver has crossed the face of his single man defender and with the safety coming down that leaves that post wide open dk metcalf on the other hand is a little bottled up you could potentially try to take a contested catch with a receiver that big but considering there's two other wide open receivers i wouldn't do that although i understand he is getting hit as we speak right now the point remains that the ball should have gone to the tight end and if it's not going to go to the tight end then at least try to make a move on the pass rusher step up in the pocket step to your right where there's an alley to run roll out do something if you really want the ball to go elsewhere but for all intents and purposes the ball should have just gone to the tight end here um and it's just a bad read by russell wilson and i think this is a clear demonstration of how he just has almost no faith in anybody not named tyler lockett or dk metcalf and that comes down to coaching the coaches should help russell wilson by getting him a better offensive line they should help him with play calling they should help him with weapons they should help him with a better defense and all of these things combine in just a bad situation where you're bottlenecking one of the best quarterbacks in the league and that's not to say he doesn't have his faults we've been going over them for the better part of 10 minutes the problem is not on russell wilson's shoulders he needs help from his front office he needs help from his teammates and he needs help from his coaches with a new offensive coordinator i think that the seahawks will finally get back to a different style of offense that benefits russell wilson when you have russell wilson playing his best football it is really really hard to beat the seahawks with the Seahawks hiring a new offensive coordinator in the shape of Shane Waldron and Brian Schottenheimer going to the Jags, I think that the style of offense is going to change. Less pressure on Russell Wilson to perform at a high level because I think the mentality that the Seahawks have is completely wrong. When you have a good quarterback, that doesn't mean you throw all the weight on their shoulders. You help them out in every aspect you can because they can handle more weight than most. You don't go and throw it all on them. Look at all the good teams in the NFL. The Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes, the Buccaneers with Tom Brady. They don't throw the weight of their team onto the back of the quarterback. They help them in every other aspect so that the quarterback can do his job correctly. Hey guys, it's Noah. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Go ahead, subscribe. We just reached a thousand subscribers. That's insane to me. Thank you guys so, so much for helping me reach this goal. And I hope to continue to grow with you guys. You guys have really, really helped me find an avenue. Um, where I can share my opinions and, and I don't know, man, I, I'm just kind of talking here. I'm rambling. Thank you so much. This has been awesome to start this YouTube channel. I would have never guessed that it would have gotten this far. Um, but yeah, thanks guys.